Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash Today I effed up. This first post is from user Lex Iconis. Today I effed up by making myself look utterly insane in a pet store. This happened earlier today. My partner and I stopped in at a pet store to buy food and litter for our cats. This pet store is part of a chain that works with rescue agencies in our area. Each location has an adoption centre where cats who are deemed ready for adoption are kept. Another detail, my partner has a sister whose name we shortened to Cat. Cat has long volunteered for one of our local rescue agencies to foster cats, which are then brought back to the various locations of the pet store chain in question. So we'll stop by the adoption centre to look at the kitties, and sometimes they look familiar. That's right, sometimes we can see cats cats in the adoption centre. Of course, she takes care of so many at any given time that it's hard for me to keep track. But when I recognise one, I get pretty excited to see them ready to find humans of their very own. Back to today. The pet store location we're at has the adoption centre nearer to the front of the store than most other locations, so I went to look at the cats while my partner stood in line nearby. Then I see them, two sister kittens who are eerily familiar. I remember one of them because of her name, and the other one because she looks like a young version of one of our guys. I look up at my partner and I ask, very loudly. Are these cats? I think these are cats. I look at him and he's just staring at me with a very concerned look on his face. Confused, I continue a little louder. Seriously, I think these ones are cats. After a pause, a look of understanding comes to his eyes and he just shakes his head. I then look at the other people in the line who are also staring at me. Then I realised, without the necessary context, it looked like a 30-something year old guy who wasn't entirely sure what cats looked like and that I was excited to maybe be able to identify them. I returned to the line and just silently wished for death. When we make it out to the store, my partner tells me that even he wasn't sure what I was talking about at first and was wondering if he should bring me to a hospital before he understood what I was trying to say. Update can now confirm they were definitely cats. This next story was posted by user Oodleshanks. Today I effed up by watching The Office with my autistic son. Not actually today, but yesterday. But first, some background. My almost eight-year-old son with autism will fixate on certain things he hears, and the more related to body parts or functions, the more he fixates and repeats them over and over and over. On the day in question, I sat down on the couch and started watching The Office. My kids love it, so they eventually all ended up in the living room with me watching. The episode in question was one where Michael and Dwight tricked Jim into driving with them to the Utica branch to prank them for trying to steal one of their employees. During the drive, Dwight pees in an empty soda can in the back seat. Michael notices and starts driving badly, which causes Dwight to lose his balance and eventually say, uh, I think I cut my penis on the lid. I think you probably know where this is going. The rest of that day and today, my son repeated that line approximately 8,000 times. He's still saying it to anyone in earshot, including the neighbour kids and my super conservative mother. There's also nothing I can do about it. Bringing attention to it will make it go on longer. So I just have to wait until it loses its comedic effect and wait for the next highly inappropriate but hilarious phrase he decides to fixate on. Hoping by the time he goes to therapy tomorrow night, he'll have stopped saying it. Fingers crossed. This next one was posted by user Shadrach Meshax. Today I effed up by pranking my office a la Jim from the office. I thought it would be funny to put a Bluetooth speaker in the ceiling and play sounds of cats over it. I found an 8 hour video of cats meowing on YouTube that was perfect. I paired an old phone to the speaker, tossed the phone in a drawer of an empty desk and tucked the speaker under a ceiling tile. It was perfect. You could only hear the cats if you listened real close. It sounded like there was a cat in the ceiling, but you really couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from. I went to my office, got busy with work and forgot about it until I went to break. I walked into the break room and several people were talking about the cat that must be in the ventilation system. I chuckled to myself while I grabbed my coffee and made a loop through accounting department to see if there were any peeps talking about the cats in the ceiling. To my horror, Half the ceiling tiles were removed and there were two maintenance men on ladders looking for the cat. They were real close to the speakers but I hadn't found it quite yet. I just reversed out of there and went back to work. 
They eventually found the speaker and shortly after everyone got an email from the big boss reprimanding the guilty party and asking for any information on the culprit. Update, a conspiracy theory emerged by the end of the day. Several of them don't believe that it was a prank at all. They think the maintenance people lied about it being a prank, and that management made it up to get people back to work, and that maintenance is planning to set out traps and poison to kill it. One person claimed they absolutely heard the cat yesterday, and I crap you not, a couple of them claim they still hear it. This next one was posted by user nicknack1313. Today I effed up by inviting a stranger to come meet my breasts. This morning I was out for a walk with my two dogs. Now it's important for context that you understand how pretty my dogs are. They are both rescue husky mixes that look fairly unusual and have really beautiful blue eyes. It's not out of the ordinary for people to stop me and ask about them, compliment them and want to pet them. Having these ridiculously gorgeous dogs has somewhat desensitised me to people yelling out of car windows and across streets because maybe three times a week someone will yell a dog compliment at us. So we were walking along the sidewalk when a man working on some new construction across the street yelled, Oh my god, I love your doggers! I gave him a big smile and yelled back, Thanks! Wanna say hi? He looked slightly surprised but smiled and started walking over. When he crossed the street, he was suddenly acting a bit awkward and not really paying much attention to the dogs. I had them sit so maybe he'd feel comfortable petting them, but honestly, I was getting a weird vibe now and wanted to get on my way. We then had the following interaction. Him. So, do you want to give me your snap? Me. Um, no thanks. You can say hi to them here and I'm going to get going. Him. Here. Y you just want to... Mine's pulling down a shirt. Here's where I realise all at once that I'd effed up. I had been desensitised by years of dog compliments and I'm now putting the pieces together that this man had very likely catcalled me and I was basically a catcaller's dream. Friendly and receptive to his advancement by smiling and inviting him over to say hi. My mind locked on to what he had originally yelled. Oh my god, I love your doggers. I love your doggers. Doggers. Finally. My dumbass brain puts the pieces together and I squeak out horrified. Did you say you love my knockers? He nods yes and I wish I could say I had some clever retort. But honestly, I just gave him a firm point of my index finger and an exasperated no before the pups and I hightailed it out of there. This last post is from user saumi964. Today I effed up by sleeping through a work meeting and accidentally volunteering for a year off of work. I work in an industry that has been decimated by Covid. Destroyed. Our business has been reduced by 90% and as such I've been working 15 hours a week only since March. There hasn't even really been enough work to fill that 15 hours even. So when this all started upper management started doing weekly status update calls about what was going on and how we were doing. Spoiler alert, we aren't doing well. Now, I paid dutiful attention to the first 15 or 20 or so of these, at which point I concluded these calls were completely worthless and there was no reason to dial in, as it was always a waste of time since Covid isn't going anywhere. My genius ass started using this one hour a week to take a nap, a nice Monday morning nap. Who doesn't love those? So here comes the F up. At one of my calls they had actual information to share. Since the company is F, they are asking people to take voluntary leaves of absence reduce your hours next year to 20 per week, or even possibly resign. I, however, did not attend this meeting and missed out on some key details of this programme. The next day I have a Zoom call with my boss and he mentions this programme. I panic a little as I have no idea what he's talking about, but eventually corporate sends an email about choosing which one you want to participate in. I choose the year off because the reduced work schedule is crap and I'm making no money, so I'll just find something else. What I later found out is you did not have to participate in this program. I thought you had to choose a year of leave or reduce work schedule or resign, but you don't. So everyone else on my team is going back to 100% hours December 1st, except for me, who's taking a year off because I took a nap and missed the meeting explaining what was going on. I feel like Chandler Bing being sent to Tulsa. So if anyone is hiring dudes who nap during work, Hit me up, lol. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.